Got it. You know, um, but the market is actually pricing in something else, right? The market is pricing in a lot more cuts by the end of the year. So if you go back to the uh, SOFR watch, uh, there we go. It's pricing in, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we should be down by by the end of the year uh, to three point seven five to uh, to 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 four percent. You know, what I mean, by that range. Whereas the dot plot was looking at again four point five as an average, right? Or maybe just even slightly above that. You know, what I mean. So the market is pricing in more cuts and deeper cuts than than the Fed, and so there's an opportunity there. Depending on if the Fed are, uh, if the Fed are correct, I would guess, right? So you know, because the markets, or if the if the market's correct, then they've already pretty much priced in. <laughs> do you know what I mean? The rate cuts, no, or or or, or the downside in terms of the the dollar depreciation isn't necessarily. How do I put it? Yeah, like I said, they've kind of priced in to a certain degree um, the the dollar depreciation. It doesn't mean that. You know, it's going to be. It's going to look like this. Like it's just one price where you see. Sorry, one second. Where it's like, remember, things prices moving, moving auctions, right? So the market would say, all right, then. Well, we think that, and just for argument's sake, we're looking at a DXY. And so, you know, the DXY. What they're saying is, is by a certain price, by a certain time, what should happen is, is that the dollar, if if you know the dollar will end up moving like this and then you'll see something like this and then you'll see like that right and let's say for example this is the end of 2024 and so what the market will slowly start to do right is they will begin to you know uh price in the the, the rate cut already if their projections are fine so let's say for example we're somewhere around you know here i don't know right on the on the dollar index and that might be what well, i don't even know what the dollar index is at the moment but let's just say that it's maybe 102 something like that right uh, 102 0.02 whatever it is now this is the current pricing for the dollar if for example the uh they're correct about you know let's say for example five rate cuts yeah the dollar will stay between likely stay between maybe 102 and maybe something like you know 90 90 maybe 98 let's just say for example right so that the market is saying okay that's the price yeah this is the the average of the dollar that's expensive and that's cheap yeah if we're correct about this now they they will have to end up pricing the dollar higher right it have to be like a higher range, yeah. If, for example, there's only three rate cuts, does that make sense? So it might be actually between maybe one o, I don't know, one o four or one o five, for example, to maybe one o two. Yeah, because of three rate cuts. Does that make sense? So the so the so the opportunity now is just looking to see if the market is wrong about the pricing. And if it is, then the market would re would have to reprice the dollar higher. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Uh, let me guess. Um, I have a question, actually. I'm sorry I'm taking right. uh, your time, but um, this, this, I know this, I've asked this, this before. This is but... the time for it, Sid. This is the time for it. You know what I mean? So okay, I don't... great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know I've asked this before, but it's still a little bit unclear in my mind. Um, so in general, for 2024, you would expect the US dollar to drop because the Fed will be dropping rates. But let's say you want to trade against another currency that is also going to drop or expected to drop rates like the euro yeah. how would you ex how do you trade the euro us dollar in that case would you expect okay. like a ranging market that is going slowly downward or you expect right. a ranging market how how do you so, what so, yeah so, what's your bias right so then then there's the there's a few things a couple of things that you need to look for is the number of cuts right so the number of cuts that are likely to occur yeah 
versus the um and also say versus but the and also the the um the uh, how deep are those cuts going to be right so the depth of those cuts right or the size of those cuts and so if you have let's say and this is a great question by the way great question if you have the euro right are expected to cut four times and the dollar are expected to cut five yeah then on the surface you would likely buy the euro and sell the dollar yeah because you've got those amount of cuts but again we need to understand the size of the cuts right so let's just say yeah if the euro are cutting and by the end of their four cuts maybe they've cut by i don't know uh three percent let's just say but the federal reserve have had you know they're they're planning on doing shallower cuts yeah and they only cut them two percent then in fact then in fact you probably want to uh, sell the euro and buy the dollar because at the end of the day it's really about this this takes probably more precedence the size of the cuts takes a bit more precedence than the number of cuts simply because it's just you know where interest rates are going to be at the end of the cutting cycle does that make sense yes and is this like in the long term you're talking about now not yeah like, so, like the, ex so the expectation decision. because remember as well sid yeah that we are we are nobody knows what's going to happen so what we have to do is kind of buy the rumor right or trade the rumor you know i, I would say probably maybe 80 percent of the time we're actually trading the rumor <laughs> do you know what i mean 70 percent of the time because it's the expectation right. of, of of the cycle right it's the yeah. expectation of the cycle and because we're all we're pretty much in a state of not knowing although we do have forecasts from banks even the banks you know don't necessarily call it you know 100 percent. and uh, in recent times they've been a bit more wrong than they have been right on major trade ideas but ultimately when you think about it they don't always have to be right about something because whether it comes true or not as long as they understand when to get in when the rumor starts and maybe where to pivot when it looks like in fact that rumor isn't going to come true yeah you can still make money <laughs> do you know what i mean so it doesn't necessarily have to now the continuation of the trend or the cycle right is or i wouldn't say cycle but the trend to the downside and this is why i always say the data needs to support the narrative because if you if the narrative develops and it's okay well the dollar are going to be you know cutting you know five times this year like the market thinks then the data needs to support that it needs so inflation needs to come down right there needs to be you know gdp for example needs to come down right in in, in terms of the contraction phase right and then that gives more credence to the five percent you know the, the number of cuts right and even will give credence to potentially the amount of uh or, or the size of the cuts yeah but if you don't get the data supporting the narrative meaning that inflation remains sticky or you know coming in higher right um you know oh and 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 that's part of a trend as well by the way because you you know you get inflation trends and you get you know any trend you know will have pullbacks right so inflation isn't just a straight line down you will have you know inflation go down go down go down and it might be a month or two or quarter where it actually ticks up but then you know the overall trend is still down you know what i mean but as long as over the medium to long term disinflation and deflation do come into play as well as the same thing with the economic cycle and you know again in that economic cycle in a in a contraction phase you will have moments where you know the gdp will come in flat for example what happened with um with europe right um and so there are maybe supporting periods where you will get that but if overall there's no data and data is still kind of supporting maybe the, the 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 fact that there is still a downtrend then it gives validity to the the the, the rumor and that 
is really the way to trade <laughs> you know what i mean rob because because every, because if you don't trade like that and you're always waiting for the data to support the narrative yes you can you know you can there are still opportunities to trade that way of course there are right and of course there is but um th that way is more you're not necessarily going to get the, the meat and potatoes of the move do you know what i mean because because we, we really want to buy the rumor rather than by when we when it's confirmed do you know what i mean when that is confirmed and that's the reason why it's really important also as well to understand where you are overall on this on a cycle because if you understand where you are on a cutting cycle then you can kind of almost like filter out the noise you can kind of pick and choose and ken is a great example of this in terms of he's trading less yeah because he understands the cycle so he can kind of he's looking at it like well i'm looking at it from a very macro perspective and i'm going to pick my spots where i want to get short on the dollar so while everyone else is trying to think to themselves all right well should i buy the dollar this week should i sell the dollar this week all ken's doing because he understands the overall cycle yeah and and other traders like ken as well who have this perspective the day-to-day -day or even the week-to-week -week trading doesn't necessarily even matter because on a pullback, knowing that we're on the downtrend, you're just looking at where the major levels are. Do you know what I mean? And then you're looking at that because it's coming. The cutting cycle is coming like night follows day. It's just a case of obviously timing. But if you can kind of have the, the patience and the perspective to really kind of pick exactly where you want to and look at the macro cycles and look at the bigger picture then you don't need to necessarily even trade every day because that could be your bread and butter right whereas traders are taking maybe you know 20 trades in maybe you know a month or two right higher time frame traders you can only maybe look for just one trade or two trades and that one or two trade can make as much as you know and and more right than someone who's taking 10 or 15 or 20 trades and i always say i don't know if maybe you've heard me say this in the past but i say the number of trades you take does not equate to the amount of profit that you will make yeah so the number of trades you take does not equate to the amount of profit you make we typically you know come from working backgrounds right in terms of the more effort we put into something yeah is the more output we expect right so if i work you know 20 hours today 16 hours a day right then i expect more pay <laughs> than someone who works one you know one hour or two hours right that's just a natural uh, thing that we've that we've uh, learned as, as 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 in our uh, working adult life right and in some countries working children life and maybe it's not always like that in all in all countries of course but the point being is this in trading it, it's not that right people mistake activity with accomplishment like they always feel that they have to be active in the market and if they're bored then they're doing something wrong no it's not it doesn't work like that it's all about the right opportunity and the right opportunity doesn't come around every day or every week for, for some people and everyone's opportunity is different yeah so some people's opportunity on the day trading they see multiple opportunities but that's not the same as you know a higher time frame traders opportunity right the higher time frame trader is looking for that big move for that one where it's like ah okay this is you know this is the trade that i'm looking for that's going to run for hundreds if not a thousand pips right and so everybody has to decide what type of trader they are or they want to be and as i said just because someone like ken might take maybe one trade a month maybe one trade a year or something like that yeah it does not equate to the fact that he's going to make any less money than somebody who takes, you know, a thousand trades that year who could still end up at the end of the year flat or even worse, you know, in the negative. So I know I've gone off in a bit of a tangent, by the way. <laughs> Against his lyrical genius. Um, <laughs> but it's, 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 I think it's, it's really important to have that type of perspective when we talk about, you know, you know, trading and trying not to get caught up in these, um, you know, in the, in the day to day uh, price action and things like that. But overall, going back to what I was saying and answering your question, um, Sid, is that 
really it, it does come down to the number of cuts but also the uh the the um the the size of the cuts and again what do we expect to see on a on a price chart if we see for example this start to play out i would expect on the euro dollar yeah let's say this does come out yeah eu i would expect to see the chart do something like this overall right a gradual you know what i mean because both are cutting but overall you would think that the because the dollar is cutting less you will see something like this now if for example you see you know that the the dollar is not cutting at all right and the euro we're going to cut you know four times this year right one is holding and one is one is uh, cutting then you would expect to see something like this a a, 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 a massive trend if you expect the, the central banks to be cutting the same for example you know they're cutting five times and you know they they the size of the cut should end up maybe two by the end by the time they you know finish their five cuts then what would you expect two central banks cutting at the same you know the same uh, pace and at the same size then you would expect something like this yeah that's it yeah i see it mm -hmm. i see it okay this is very useful <laughs> Yeah, 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 it is. And um, you'll see it play out. And in fact, I'm going to show you, remind me later on to show you uh, an example of this, not necessarily with rate cuts, but with actual price action um, on currency pairs. Yeah. And when we talk about, you know, the size of moves as well as oh, well, mainly, mainly the size of moves and how it plays out on, on a price chart. But uh, but but yeah, but great question by the way. Very question, a good question. And we'll uh, and uh, I'll I'll uh, get to that a bit later. Right. So we spent enough time on the dollar. The dollar overall, and welcome to everyone.